Okay, we've got this new report from Fox Digital. The White House, the CDC, it turns out they worked more closely than realized with a major Democrat voting base, the Teachers Union. So how did unelected bureaucrats in secret prolong school shutdowns beyond what critics say was needed? It hurt America's children. This is a hot debate. Hillary Vaughn is live in Washington with more. It's good to see you, Hillary. Good to be with you, Liz. And this is coming from the CDC director herself, Rochelle Walensky. She was on Capitol Hill this afternoon. She defended their coordination with teachers unions to draft guidance on school reopenings during the pandemic. Here's her earlier. We do those engagements so we can bring in the feedback. We take that feedback and we consider it. Clearly, the unions were one of those groups that got to change the science. Uh, based there was on what not we, science that was changed. There was an omission. And if I could speak to the omission, the omission, the omission? was... But that does not jive with what a new report from House Republicans found. They talked with Dr. Henry Walk. He's the director of the CDC, CDC Center for Preparedness and Response. Walk told them this, quote, he testified that this level of coordination between the CDC and an outside organization was uncommon. In fact, according to Dr. Walk, the CDC does not typically share draft guidance outside the agency for any reason, even with other federal partners. Based on what you have seen, do you think that the CDC director should resign? Well, we're going to be asking some very pointed questions. I want to see accountability. Somebody's not telling the truth. We're going to get to the bottom of this. review draft guidelines and in some cases make changes saying this quote we do so to ensure our recommendations are feasible to implement these informative and helpful interactions often result in beneficial feedback that we consider in our final revisions to ensure clarity and usability Liz Hillary Vaughn great journalism it's good to see you we'll have you on again soon let's welcome to the show Nicole Neely of Parents Defending Education your reaction to that report Nicole, Nicole it's good to see you Good to see you. So the, the, the CDC working closely with the teachers union, the CDC is saying, well, this is how we should be working and, and doing school closures. What do you say? I mean, I'm not surprised. This administration has worked hand in glove with the teachers unions from day one. So we saw them scheme to keep schools sh uh, shut last year. We saw them um, continue to push and threaten about the different variants. And so this is something that, let's not forget, is disproportionately hitting and hurting low income families, working families, working women who are not able to go to, uh, you know, to go to work when schools are shut down. And so for all their talk of equity, I think it's pretty rich that they pretend that they represent families and students' interests when they obviously do not. We we hear you loud and clear. You know, we're going to move through this. There are member reports that a member of a local Nashville, Tennessee school board caught on a hot mic last week talking about the Supreme Court nominee hearings for Judge Brown Jackson. This, they were joking if they could attack Senator Marshall Blackburn and, quote, set the senator on fire. So that story is out there. Your quick reaction to that? I mean, it's really interesting that parents are the domestic terrorists, yet we have elected officials advocating violence. Parents are not the ones who are being violent, and you know, school board members are ones who should be modeling good behavior for the rest of the community. So this is disappointing, but unfortunately, um, I think not out of character for the Nashville School Board. And, and Neely, now we've got this. Governor DeSantis, he's really going after Disney, saying he's saying they only oppose Florida's new parental rights law, quote, after the woke mob came after Disney. Governor DeSantis is talking about hypocrisy here. Watch this. Well, and especially, Tucker, you got to wonder, like, why is the hill to die on to have transgenderism injected into kindergarten classrooms or woke gender ideology injected into second grade classroom? Why is that the hill to die on? Meanwhile, if we had done a bill that prohibited uh, talking about the abuse of Uyghurs in China, Disney would have supported that legislation because they don't want to say a word about that. Well, this bill is about providing protection so that they know they can send their young kids to school without them being sexualized, without a school telling a young girl, for example, that she may really be a boy. And for a company like Disney, 
uh, to say that they, this bill should have never passed. First of all, Tucker, they weren't saying anything when this was going through the House. They only started doing this because the mob, the woke mob, came after them. Okay, so the governor of the first clip was talking about, you know, how Disney makes films in China. So it, the other side of this parental rights law says, you know, you're introducing more lawsuits into the fight and you have to protect gay, child, uh, gay teenagers and, and have those conversations. What do you think of that side of the argument? I mean, I think that lawsuits and the courts are a great way to rein in some of the abuses we have seen from public schools that have really injected themselves into discussions that are best held between families. I have a seven-year-old and an eight-year-old, so they would fall within the Florida bill. I do not want anyone talking to my children about sex, period. Um, and the fact that this is, as Governor DeSantis said, the hill that these people want to die on is a little bit surprising. Um, it seems, I know that there are people at the Heritage Foundation that are running down numbers on this, but the threats to gay children, I think, are, are grossly overstated. Um, and the fact that lawsuits, uh, you know, the threat of that is, is starting to rein in some of the teachers who have said, I mean, we have seen tic libs of TikTok, teachers saying that they're going to do this anyway. I mean, what other recourse do families have except to turn to the courts? Because yeah. some of these school boards refuse to rein in their teachers. The Florida law prohibits the instruction of sexual orientation and gender identity in, for kindergarten, meaning five-year-olds through third grade. Uh, that's eight-year-olds. The president said, said this was a hateful bill. The bill does not ban the word gay in school settings. It doesn't ban discussions of topics related to sexual orientation and gender identity. Since when, since when do we let teachers discuss their personal life with, with children, their political opinions? They're hired to discuss the subject they are paid to teach. That's it. Any adult, straight or gay, who wants to speak to the most innocent among us about their personal and private lives, they're a menace to public welfare. There's nothing normal about an unsupervised adult teacher expounding about their private life to a five-year-old. It's an invasion of that child's innocent and pri privacy. What do they need? Do they really need five-year-old acceptance? No adult in their right mind introduces mature themes to five-year-olds. How, how do they not think that this is off the wall? Right. Absolutely. I mean, these children don't know how babies are made, yet we have to introduce and, as you said, instruct students. I mean, do lesson plans on some of these topics. Um, talk to them about pronouns and things where they don't even know basic grammar. They can't read or write. And so it is not age appropriate. And this is not a crazy bill. Polling support shows that um, the majority of American people support the bill once they know what's in it. And so it's been grossly yeah. mischaracterized. But I applaud Governor DeSantis for standing and up for Florida, families. And a poll shows Florida Democrats, Democrats of Florida, support it too. Nicole Neely, great to have you on. Come back soon.